Hey everyone, I'm Erin and welcome to the Cardboard Republic. This is a to be played video. It's sort of a special to be played video because with everything going on last month in our lives, we didn't get around to recording this. So we have two months worth of to be played info to go over at first before we get into our new games. Let's start off with Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven was our February and March game of the month because it's immense. It's the thing is huge. So Gloomhaven, we totally did play. We actually played Gloomhaven a few different times, testing it out, and we are going to keep playing it. So um, our opinions are kind of subject to change, but Gloomhaven is just like this big, it, it's, it's really big big. It's it's a game about dungeon crawling that is just huge. So that's the important thing to know about Gloomhaven. We played it a bunch. We'll let you know once we have, a, I think, a few more plays under our belt, um, what we really thought of it. Then there's Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. I will tell you right now that I love this game. I knew that I would love this game. I think in the last video I said I got like super excited about how much I would love this game, and I do. It takes way longer to actually play than I thought it would, so we haven't gotten as many plays of it as I would want, but we've still gotten like five or six, um, you know, scenarios done. So I'm very happy with where we're going with that. Um, just if you, if you play, leave yourself an evening <laughs> is all I can say. Next is North American Railways. This was the card game about collecting different stocks for train companies. Um, that's about all I can tell you about it because despite having two months and actually liking train games, we did not play this. I don't know why. I'm disappointed in myself. Uh, there are no excuses. Explorers of the North Sea is a tile laying game where you're you're basically playing Vikings. You're exploring and you're raiding and you're sending resources home, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we did play this. Actually, um, I personally did not, but Ryan did, so that still counts. And I think that he liked it. And then there's Mystic Veil. Vale. This was our replay game. So it's a game we played before that we're going to play again, yada, yada. Um, except we didn't. I really like Mystic Veil, vale, even, and I didn't play it, and Ryan, I think, likes it, and he didn't play it. And so we're gonna redeem ourselves with this one, though, because every six weeks or so, we host a board game club, which you should all come and hang out in, where we get together and we play, um, you know, one specific game, kind of like a book club, you all read the same book, you all play the same game. And then we host an online chat where we talk about it. So we are going to be doing a board game club on Mystic Veil, vale, and that's going to be coming up soon. We'll have a note about the date down below because I just don't know it off the top of my head right now. But it will be very soon and we will play Mystic Veil vale again prior to that. Pendante, though. This was our card pull game. It's where we pull a card out of the thing and try to play and review it. We didn't. I kind of forgot that it was a thing that we had to do. So that's on me. I'm sorry. Pendante is panda poker. So it's panda poker and we didn't play it. It'll go back in the deck. Let's move on though. We played three out of six. Five? Six? Five? You know what? We played three of them and that's not very good. That's like half. Maybe even less. More. I don't know. Math is hard, alright? We played three games. We played a whole lot of other games over the past couple of months, but for some reason, I don't know why, we will play so many games in a month, and yet it is so hard to play these games that we write down on a list. And that's why I'm so impressed when I see people doing those like 10 by 10 challenges where they have to play 10 games 10 times in the course of a year, right? Because like we pick like five or six games, I still don't know, and I can't even play those in a month, in two months. I don't know. I'm... I'm not really embarrassed because like why would I be embarrassed about what games I do or do not play, but I am a little disappointed in my ability to stick to a plan. <laughs> let's hope for better next month. I don't even know. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> okay, May. We're gonna start May out real strong. We're gonna pick a bunch of games that we really want to play and then we're gonna play them, which is what we say every month and it's why I'm so discouraged, but okay. <sighs> Okay, 
May. May is going to start out with Zephyr, Winds of Change. Now, this title is really confusing for me because Zephyrs are usually like airships, you know, like Hindenburg style, like the, the big explodey ones. But in this case, Zephyr is actually the name of the group of pilots of airships. So do you see, this took us a while to, it took me a while to work out. Anyway, in this game, it's kind of, it has a very semi-co-op feel where you're all piloting your own airships, but you have to kind of work together to do it. And each airship is a little bit different. This takes a little bit of that feel of Mystic Veil vale, though, in that there are different layers that you can add to your airship to make them a little bit modular, tweak things a little bit. And I'm really excited to see how that works in a game that is um, otherwise like not a card game. I mean, I've only ever seen that kind of mechanism in Mystic Veil vale, in a card game. So I am really, really interested to see how it plays in literally any other kind of game. Also, I kind of love airships. Zephyrs. Whatever. Next is Automania. This is a tycoon style game about building cars and kind of like Zephyr, it is, um, you can do what you want with it. It's, I, I wouldn't necessarily say modular because that's not really correct, but you can build any kind of car that you want. If you want something very utilitarian, but very safe, you can do that. If you want something super flashy and fast, you can do that. There are obviously trade-offs, but you have to figure out what your customers want and cater to that. I love games like this, um, so I'm so excited. I It's a game that Ryan just picked up from the Granite Game Summit, so I don't know if it's actually any good, but we're going to put it on there, we're going to put it on our list, and we're going to play it. Um, I'll let you know. Next is Yokohama. This game is... I mean, I'm excited for it, but this game is Ryan's baby. He has been so pumped for this ever since we got it, probably even before then, because we wouldn't have got it if he wasn't pumped about it. But Yokohama is a game set during the Japanese Industrial Revolution, like so many other games lately, actually. Um, but you are playing as merchants trying to make the best of your situation, trying to get the get the most points. You're trying to get the most points. You're trying to be a successful merchant like every other game in which you are a merchant. Um, it looks really, really cool. Ryan is so excited. If he hasn't played it by the time this video goes out, I will frankly be completely shocked. Those are some games that are a little bit on the heavier side of the spectrum. They're not like Diplomacy or Twilight Imperium or anything, but they're you know, not super light. So we decided that Quests of Valeria, this relatively small game, would kind of round out our list a little bit. In this game, you are playing as, um, like the head of an adventurer's guild, an adventurer's tavern. You're assembling groups of adventurers to send out on quests, and you have to try to do that strategically so that you can leverage their strengths um, and your opponent's weaknesses, and be better than all of the other groups of adventurers that your fellow players are sending out. So all in all, it, it seems like a very light game. There's been a lot of games lately, I've noticed, that are kind of in that same vein of you're either playing a questing group like One Deck Dungeon style, or you're playing like the meta game of that. Um, so I'm intrigued to see how this stacks up to previous games with a similar theme. Now, our replay game. Again, this is a game that we have played before, but we want an excuse to play it again. So for this month, for May, it's going to be Role Player, strictly because a lot of people have compared Role Player to Sagrada. Sagrada is that beautiful stained glass window game where you roll dice and then you place them in your window according to their color and the number of pips that they're showing. Um, role player is kind of similar in that you are rolling dice and placing them on your board according to their pips, basically. Um, but the theme is very different. In role player, you're not building a stained glass window, you're creating a role playing character. Now, I really, really pushed to play this one again for this month because I love Sagrada and I hated 
role player. And I'm one of the few people that I know who really didn't like role player. Um, but there was something about the theme that just didn't work for me. I don't know if maybe because the punny title didn't match with like the seriousness of the game itself or there, there was just something in my head when I first played it that it was not working for me even though I did well in the game the theme and the mechanics of it were not clicking so now that I've played a similar thing in Sagrada I really want to go back to role player and see if maybe it is just something in particular about role player that wasn't working for me or maybe I needed to explore that same mechanism in a different game and come back. So we're gonna play role player and I'll let you know whether or not that works. I'm adding Pendante back in and shuffling. I'm watching the guinea pigs. They're fighting for dominance right now. I think the bigger one is going to come out on top. But you never know, because our cats fought for dominance too when we first got Nim, and Nim, despite being tiny, is definitely the alpha. So we could have a surprise. Okay. Cutting the deck. Let's see what we have. Viceroy! Viceroy is a game that we played once or twice before, but we've never actually gotten around to officially reviewing it. So this will be really good incentive. In Viceroy, you're competing for power and influence, but the way you do that is unique. You put cards down in this like pyramid style tableau where um, all the cards have like a little semicircle in their corners. And depending on how you match things and how you place things, you can build up extra points and cool stuff that way. It has been a while since I've played it. So I remember liking it, but also having reservations about parts of it. But like, it's been so long that I don't quite remember which parts I liked and which parts I had reservations about. I remember that I really didn't do well. But I also think that it's one of those games you do have to play it a couple times to get the hang of it. So we're going to play Viceroy again, and then we're going to review it within a month or so. Um, we like to give ourselves a little bit of extra leeway depending on how we want to put the review out. But either way, we'll report back on what we thought of it in this video next month, um, and you should see the review out either in podcast form on Vox, Repu Vox Republica, that was a plug that I botched, or it could be on our website, Cardboard Republic. So you can check those out and see if it is up yet. I mean, it definitely won't be up like as of the time that this goes up, but you can look in the future. Great plan. We're doing great. <laughs> okay, so that is May. Those are the games that we're going to play in May. I'm really excited for almost all of them, which is awesome. Um, and we're going to get those all played and then we're going to report back next month and I'm not going to be so disappointed in myself and my time management skills because we're going to have played, you know what? Aim for the stars. We're going to have played all of them. Okay, so if you like our content here, you can please go over to our website, cardboardrepublic.com, and check out our Patreon too, because we really appreciate everyone who has the ability to back us there. It means a lot to us. Um, and as always, please subscribe, and down below, leave comments on what you are planning on playing in May. We will be back soon.